Welcome to another edition of James Martell's Coffee Talk, where James, successful publisher, speaker, and author of Online Success for Non-Techies, talks frankly and openly with experts from within the internet marketing industry about strategies and techniques you can use to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand. Here is your host, James Martell. Hey, is that Joshua here? This is Joshua. Hey, Joshua. James Martell here. It's good to, uh, very good of you to join me today. Thanks. Uh, thanks Always a fun. pleasure to talk with you, James. Awesome. For the uh, for the, for the listeners that may not know who you are uh, yet, let me just give you a little introduction. Joshua Sloan is the director of online marketing for One and One dot com. That's One and One Hosting that uh, I believe is the largest web hosting company on the planet. Yep, that's me. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's quite, a, that's quite a, a feat, I must say, and it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on the line. I know the listeners are going to love what you have to, to say and share with us with uh, making money with affiliate programs, and probably more specifically in your case, uh, making money with uh, hosting and yes. affiliate programs, although I'm sure a lot of what you're going to be sharing with us is uh, can be crossed over into other industries, because as you know, people are uh, working in, in different industries as well, so I know yep. you and I have had a chance to had, have many conversations, we've been you know chit-chatting back and forth, I think the first time you and I met would have been Commission Junction 2005, is that is that right? I believe that's true, although uh, your reputation preceded you in my world uh, by at least a couple of years uh, ahead of that. Uh, I was an instructor and uh, online marketer for a small private university and uh, used uh, much of your advice and uh, many of your strategies to uh, offer insights into the world of affiliate marketing uh, even prior to our meeting. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for sharing that. It, uh it's been a pleasure to meet you. I know we've, uh, you and I, we've actually had an opportunity to do some traveling together as well. You uh, <laughs> were kind enough to uh, organize my participation in uh, a couple of areas, actually a few areas. Two, two that really come to mind is the trip uh, a couple months back when you uh, were kind enough to have me flown to Germany uh -huh. to meet with uh, Alex and some of the people there and, and, and get a tour of the data center. Which we're going to talk a little bit a little bit later on, which is basically the server center where the hosting resides. So the, I think the affiliates are going to be interested in hearing that. And then you, uh, then we all jumped on an airplane from Germany and we flew to Spain and took in the America's Cup yacht race, which a uh, sailboat uh, sailboat competition. Yep. Yeah, a little sailboat competition where we uh, got to uh, sit in a spectator boat out in the Mediterranean Sea watching. Uh, $10 million boats race. I was, <laughs> that was kind of cool. It was probably one of the most spectacular affiliate prizes uh, that I've ever been involved with uh, to take uh, our top affiliates from uh, U.S., uh, Germany, U.K., uh, and France and uh, have them visit our United Internet one-on-one uh, -on -one sponsored uh, boat in the, uh, in the America's Cup. Uh, definitely a fantastic trip, and we're, we're happy to have you a part of that. Yeah, it was spectacular. It's uh, probably a great place for us to uh, to jump into talking about affiliate programs as it relates to one and one because one of the things that obviously gives me a, a little kick in the pants from time to time, and I'm sure a lot of people is is the contests and the the different things that you know. It's nice to make the money, and we do that quite well. But it's also mm -hmm. nice to get some of these perks. So maybe you could share a little bit about that contest and to tell me just a little bit more about it. Because I know I was there, and I had a chance to, you know, chat with your guys, and we and there was 25 of them there, I believe, and you, you, know, you whined and you dined us for days. <laughs> the whole thing was completely covered. It, it was, I mean, we could we could make an hour long call out of it. We won't. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was spectacular in itself. So, but how how did that come about? How did the affiliates get involved? Because the listeners, you know, obviously, if they're thinking about potentially building. An affiliate site around the hosting industry, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of incentive, the type of contests and stuff that uh, one and one. Well, the um, uh, the U.S. Uh, affiliate uh, program has only been up and running since the uh, fall of 2005. Uh, excuse me, 2004. 
And so we're still evolving the uh, the contest incentives, and and the ideas we have range from, um, I would say, you know, typical fair to midland to uh, quite exotic and uh, quite exciting. The um, America's Cup competition was, uh, I think, one of our more exciting ideas. Uh, we took a, a two month period, and uh, the top sellers, uh, the top three sellers in the U.S., uh, Germany, excuse me, U.S., U.K in France and the top 10 sellers in Germany uh, who uh, sold the most amount of packages during this two-month period, uh, they won a uh, expense-paid trip to Valencia, Spain, uh, where we, we covered the uh, flight and hotel entertainment, uh, sightseeing, um, and uh, lots of whining and dining, as you said. Yes. And um, while the America's Cup, uh, this is one of the first uh, competitions uh, that, uh, one of the few competitions in many years that's actually, it's been held in Europe. Most of the time, I think the American team has been the uh, predominant winner of that race for many, many years. Um, this was actually the very, very first race that uh, uh, Germany has ever sponsored uh, in this competition. Uh, so this was, uh, uh, you know, we're not necessarily under any delusions of grandeur in the sense of, you know, expecting to win the race the first time we ever enter it, but like anything in life, uh, practice makes perfect. And uh, so this was a, a remarkable opportunity to share in a once-in-a-lifetime um, uh, spectator, particip- you know, spectator-type sport uh, with our top partners and uh, also to build, uh, you know, create some special time where we could build our relationship with our top partners and also to have our top partners from different countries share their experiences, not only with uh, online marketing and affiliate marketing, but also their experiences with uh, one-on-one. And uh, I would say that uh, it certainly accomplished our goal of rewarding our top affiliates and of uh, continuing to reinforce our bonds with uh, top performers and uh, giving them a international perspective on what they're doing and who they're doing it for. Um, it's very easy to hear the world's largest and, you know, have your eyes gloss over and not be quite sure what to make of it. Uh, I know in America, anyway, uh, it's not uncommon for any company to to claim they're the, the world's largest or the world's number one. And uh, so sometimes the North American audience might take that for granted. But uh, as you said, uh, your own personal experience, uh, having viewed our commitment to technology resources in our German data center, um, it's quite impressive when you realize how serious we take our business and uh, how serious we are about helping our affiliate partners gain new knowledge and maximize their earnings with our program. Absolutely. And I, I can uh, say that I've actually, having a chance to spend, you know, roughly four days with the top 25 affiliates from one and one was, uh, was you know, you could just, you could just, Feel the wealth of information and to see how how sharing people are. I know a lot of people came away from that, you know, better affiliates even when they got there. And these are the top guys. So just to be part of an op, you know, uh, uh, an event like that was 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 clearly something that people should strive for. Because it's funny how many times affiliates will kind of operate in uh, isolation. <laughs> and they think they must be the only one in the world who's struggling with certain issues or the only right. one who's trying to build relationships or right. monitor their campaigns or activities. And uh, so sometimes just sharing that, you know, having a space where you can have people who don't look at you crazy when you say, uh, I'm an affiliate marketer, <laughs> um, that, that can be a, a real strong uh, reinforcer of what they're doing and why they're doing it. Sure, and it's good to see these top guys too, you know. A lot of people, especially those getting started or maybe have been around for a year or two, they have this perception that the top guys never have any struggles and they don't have any problems. And, you know, it's for the <laughs> they all have, every one of us has our, our challenges and struggles from time to time. Yeah, there's very few top affiliates that started out at the top. That's right. Absolutely. Let's, let's, let's maybe shift gears a little bit here and, and okay. talk about hosting as a topic because in... Variably, when guys are getting started, obviously one of the first things that they need to do when diving into the industry, or maybe they're in the industry and they're already successful and they're poking around kind of thinking, well, maybe I should get another site going. And 
this whole idea of having to choose a topic, some people do it very naturally, some people struggle a little bit with it. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I can understand that because, you know, you want to get it right. So yep. especially when you're getting started, especially when you've got some experience. So this taking some time to figure it out is a good is a good idea. Maybe you could share a little bit about the hosting market from the affiliate perspective. And I guess I, we can, we're, we're, we're not only talking to the U.S. market, we're talking to a mm -hmm. global market here. So we can yeah. kind of open it up a little bit. So maybe share okay. with us a little bit about hosting. In, well, in I, I, uh, first let me say that uh, there are big differences in different markets. Um, you know, one and one is certainly a company that's one of these rare companies that took a, a highly successful European business model and transplanted it in the U.S. market rather than, you know, a U.S. company that transplants their business into uh, uh, Europe or Asia. So but it's a little bit, little bit reverse of what we're using. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, different from the normal, what you normally hear about in business school or, or see in the you know business trade magazines and that kind of stuff but um so the uh, you know obviously there are a lot of similarities where you know where hosting is about storage it's about bandwidth it's about uh value added site add-ons uh tools uh it's about support it's about uh so if you know uh, there are some shared consistencies across different markets but the expectations for pricing are very different the the amount of competition between companies is very different and the amount of experience and competition between affiliates is also very different um uh, the in the U.S. market, I think we have one of the more developed Internet usage uh, populations, and uh, in some ways there are, uh, without being uh, North American-centric, I, I, I can comfortably say that there are many trends, uh, strategies, and behaviors which um, uh, be begin uh, to be developed in the North American market, and then uh, uh, other parts of the world then uh, come to those same strategies, techniques, uh, or realizations. At a, at a later date, right. um, the uh, the thing that I would say is most important uh, is you know you really want to believe in what you're promoting. Um, it's good that uh, established affiliates they already have some experience with at least one web host. Uh, most of them use domains or they have a a website. Um, uh, and this does give them a point of reference when evaluating uh, whether or not they would like to promote hosting products. Um, so they're not necessarily as at a loss uh, like somebody who doesn't have a website or is absolutely brand new to affiliate marketing. Right. Um, because, they are, because, because they already have some experience with the whole Exactly, exactly. But even if you only have a little bit of experience or you have no experience, one of the things that, regardless of the industry that you want to promote as an affiliate, but one of the things that is absolutely essential to your long-term success is communication. Because whatever product or service you might be promoting as an affiliate, your ability to speak with someone inside the company who can let you know strong points, hot selling products, upcoming offers, respond to needs for special creatives, uh, things like this. I mean, communication, not just for an affiliate program manager, but for affiliates themselves, um, is a extremely important component to their long-term success. So one of the things we see as a consistent um, a commonality across many of our very top-performing affiliates is not only uh, their desire to communicate, but their willingness to communicate. So we have top affiliates who will call us two, three times a month, check in to get updates, to find out what creatives we're working on, what uh, you know products we may be able to tell them about. Of course, there's sometimes there's, there's things we're not able to release, uh, yeah. but we can tell them to keep posted and call us back in a week and we'll be able to give them more information. But, uh, but that responsiveness of you know having somebody who really cares to get you accurate information, uh, Nobody on my online marketing team would ever purposely give out bad or bogus information. If they don't know, they're going to find you know myself or somebody within the company who can give the accurate or correct or up-to-date information. So communication is key. The other thing we do see among top performers, and I think this is a good guidepost for future affiliates in the world, is that... Uh, most of our top affiliates uh, only promote one and one within the hosting vertical. 
um, the or at very least, you know, maybe one or two hosting programs. Yeah, that was but to, good to point out. That was actually a question I, I was thinking about. Yeah, I mean, an okay. affiliate who tries to join 40 different web hosting companies and promote them all equal is going to have a real tough time because features are always changing. Prices can change, although they don't change frequently with one one um, And trying to keep all of that information up to date is extremely labor-intensive. So the very best of affiliates will pick a single partner within a single vertical and they'll get to know that that advertiser, that company, very, very well. And so they really take a long-term view. They look for companies that they can establish good consulting and talking kind of relationships with. And they, when they offer an opinion or a review or a recommendation about a company, it's based in something more than just a company who has the promise of a high payout. You bet. So you've seen, uh, you you obviously deal with hosting affiliates, you know, all day long. Yep. When when and you've seen you've seen the affiliate sites that have, you know, as you say, forty different hosting companies on it. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you see a page of content, now let's say let's say somebody, how how would the conversion rate um, be affected if you had let's say a, a nice promo for one and one, but then you're comparing it to say two or three other hosting companies? Do you see? Obviously, one and one wouldn't get all the sales, but overall, do you find that from talking to your top guys, mm -hmm. they get a, a higher conversion rate by focusing on one hosting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, especially people who are doing the uh, the affiliates who are doing paid search. Um, if they're offering, if they're trying to tell uh, a, a, a search visitor that these are the five companies that offer uh, database hosting, it doesn't always help the conversion of a specific web host on that list. Um, however, if they say these are five companies that offer database hosting, but this is what I think about this one particular company, that's definitely going to increase the conversion on that one particular company. Right. Um, the more unique the content is, the more based in experience and personal insights and thoughts, um, the, the better the content will do. Right. As opposed to just taking megabytes this, gigabytes that, bullet points off our main website, and just regurgitating the same thing that the advertisers are saying on their own websites. Uh, you know, one of the long-term secrets that you talk about is creating unique value, uh, unique and long-term value. That doesn't mean that you can just write a review and then walk away and for the next five years it's going to produce for you. That's right. But it does mean that you have to be honest with your visitors. You have to give real information and valuable content and information in order to increase your conversions. If, for example, you're using natural content mm -hmm. and you're developing a page about one-on-one -on -one Internet, Obviously, if you put another company on that page, you're going to dilute the conversion potential for one and one Internet. That's right. Now, tell me, you see, obviously seen a lot of very successful pages. Now, I'm not actually even talking mm -hmm. websites in this case. I'm talking specific web pages. If you, could, if you could maybe give us a picture of what you would say the perfect one-page uh, piece of content would be to promote a hosting, or, or for that matter, any product, but let's say specifically to one and one Ideally, what would you like to see on that one single page? Yeah, that, it's, a, it's a little bit of a tough question. Um, I mean, I, I, I absolutely like to see affiliate pages or, or microsites which have real contact information. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be an email form, but there's some way for the visitor to interact with the author of that content. Okay. Um, I like to see um, uh, longer content, uh, like yourself. I think you know that uh, a single paragraph is not necessarily enough information for somebody who needs to make a decision That's right. uh, about a product. Um, so if, you, I, if you were to see a page, then so let's mm -hmm. let's imagine the visitor just did a Google search, whether it be paid or natural. Yep. They, make, they make the click. Yep. And let's say they're looking for a specific product. Give me a specific product that you would. Well, uh, for like a one-on-one like, product, I would say domains is a is a super hot product for us. And okay, so, uh, 
so on this page now, we're going to be promoting domains right. for one and one What what would you say that page should consist of? Well, you, you have to kind of get yourself as an affiliate into the mind of the searcher. Uh, you don't always know what the trigger points or what the motivators are, but there are some safe assumptions. Obviously, you want to be able to tell the visitor what the price is. Yes. So if you don't put the one-on-one's domain prices start at five ninety-nine, that's a big mistake. Right. Um, you want to let them know if there are things about that product, for ex- in this example, the domains, which might be unique to this company. For example, the the free gigabyte email account and free private registration and the five-page WYSIWYG site builder. If you neglect to uh, point out these unique features, again, you're kind of letting your audience down. Now, that's material you can get off our, our website. What you can't get off our website is what you, the affiliate, really think about this company or about this product. You, as an affiliate, you've bought domains. You know what it's like to find a good domain price. You know what it's like to deal with uh, different kinds of control panels for managing your domains. Well, and, I, and that's a good point because as an affiliate, I, I, I've, I'm pretty particular on what I like to see from a domain name company. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. a lot of them, even still, they don't give you consolidated domains. So you get an, almost a separate account for each one. Yeah, and but you know, I want everything is in the same place. So you can add multiple domains. domains to a single account. That's right. And there are some people who choose not to do that because maybe they're reselling the domain, or they want to associate that domain with a separate hosting package where they, you know, they can have statistics just on that domain. So there are reasons for managing your domains in different ways. But but this kind of practical, pragmatic, honest. And that's you know capital H honest opinion that isn't based on it doesn't have anything to do with the commission that you're earning on that product. That kind of content strikes me as seriously impressive, well thought out, and when presented to somebody who's in this decision making process, uh, will certainly add value to them. It's a minimal amount of distractions. Yep. You don't put, you know, 16 other unrelated products on on the page that's talking about domains. Yes. You might make an upsell pitch where you say, you know, this is great domain, great company, but you can get your domains for free if you buy hosting from them. Right. <laughs> you know, that's certainly an intelligent upsell or cross sell from an affiliate. Yes. But you don't want to put, uh, you know, web design software on the page that's promoting one on one domains. You don't want to put you banner ads. You you probably want to avoid the appearance of uh, Google AdSense uh, on your on your content based pages. I know that content helps to sell. Uh, and generate clicks on AdSense. I'm not opposed to AdSense all the time, but you ask me, and in a perfect world, uh, I, I still much prefer a clean page where there's not a lot of blink, blink, flash, flash, distraction, and confusion. Music to my ear. So you're saying a nice, maybe a nice, well-written headline, two or three, four paragraphs of, of legitimate, honest opinion. Yeah, maybe one or two sub-headlines. Um, uh, most people on the web still to this day scan first with their eyes. Yes. And if what they scan looks relevant and important, then they'll go back and actually read the details. So what good layout, uh, you know, crisp, clean fonts, no distracting, you know, no more than two or three colors, I would say, even if we want to get real picky, yeah. um, to keep it uh, relatively simple. Um I'm not opposed to the use of templates. I think templates can be great for people, but don't just take some other affiliate in the same industry and copy their template. Right. You know, a consumer is going to smell that a mile away. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Well, we must, uh, you know, we know a lot of these industries nowadays, unfortunately, have got people out there writing bogus reviews of of different things, and they hire people just to write reviews, and they're not legitimate. Mm -hmm. So it's good to hear that you say, you know, this has got to be an honest opinion, and, uh, you know, that's There's still value in consumer review sites, but keep in mind that it can it can reduce the overall conversion of any single uh, company that you place on that review site uh, if you put them all in you know one section. Um, it also um, can make for an overwhelming amount of content uh, that can be just as confusing as 
you know, showing not enough content um, if you're trying to describe, you know, more than five or ten, you know, companies. Uh, and then just from a, you know, practical management standpoint, it, it can be very difficult f from an affiliate side to keep that content updated. And from a consumer side, once you've seen three or four or five, six different hosting review sites, you start to scratch your head and go, who do I believe? Right. And uh, if consumers really knew that uh, affiliates are out there pushing their highest payout company to the top, regardless of what that means to the consumer, I think consumers would start to uh, mistrust and distrust these review sites. Absolutely. Content. Let's let's talk a little bit more about content. Let's, okay. Uh, let, let's you and I just have a little chit chat now about. Ideas for, for content for a hosting website. Now, you've obviously seen probably thousands of pages of content that have been developed. What, uh, what would you say to, a, to somebody that was maybe brand new or, or just looking at the hosting industry right off the bat as far as developing a, a website around, say, natural search? Let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's go that road first. And I, I do want to talk right. a little bit about paid search, too, but let's start with sure. natural. Well, if you're creating content based on experience, there's um you know one of the easiest ways to create content is the what I call the how to how do you pick a domain how do you set up your email address how do you pick a hosting plan how you know these kind of how to's when based in personal experience and personal insight really can create value for a consumer that isn't sure maybe they're ready for the hosting but they don't know what to expect yep. in the process. So how-tos are a great thing, especially when they're based in personal experience and personal insight. Um, there are, I guess what I would call, definition-oriented content. What is web hosting? What is a domain name? What is a database? What is uh, uh, a WYSIWYG site builder tool? So you know uh, this, this information. This is invaluable to people because I, I you know, obviously I, I train people on this a lot. Uh huh. And the average person out there on the internet, or the average person in life, period, they they, they are still confused, or or may not even be aware. They don't know the difference between a domain name and a hosting package. So it's oh, how they relate to each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how they relate to each other, or what a DNS is, like what a domain name server is, and how it works. So mm -hmm. people that are just well, that's the nice thing about the hosting industry is you can pick a favorite topic. Let's say you just bought your first domain name, you write about that experience, how you chose it, where you went to, uh, what you thought about the experience, the process, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. But obviously, in that process, you're going to be exposed to things like DNS or domain name server hosting plans, and those make great, beautiful, keyword-rich hyperlinks to other opinions or insights that, uh, you know, come from your experience. Yes. So, you know, t typically, you know, any question that you have that you answer yourself or experience yourself, anybody should be able to create at least a page worth of content out of that. Yes. And if you do it with the intent of helping some anonymous person, maybe you know, picture it as your grandmother or your cousin or something, you're creating this content to help them so that it's even easier for them in the process, you're going to see potential to do this with other keyword or topic or product related uh, uh, phrases uh, um, in the process. So, You bet. I think it, I think it was... Uh just shifting gears a little bit again, mm -hmm. uh, you'd mentioned to me earlier that one and one has 22 or 23 different products. Uh, 24 different products. 24 yeah. different products. Okay. Yeah, in our industry, it's it's very rare to have a company that has more than say six or ten uh, products. I think one of our competitors has uh, 13 total products in which uh, their affiliates can earn. So, you know, the fact that we have uh, more or as many, uh, I would relatively comfortable saying more products than uh, anyone in our in our industry um, gives a very broad based uh, uh, source for that content. So maybe somebody who's bought a domain and set up a basic website, they may not know what it what uh, dedicated servers are all about. 
And it's better not to give fluff. I mean, don't dance around the issue. If if um, uh, the word server comes up in your content, and you feel like you need to create something. Um, you know, be honest. You know, tell your cons- your visitor, I-, I-, I have not purchased a server, but I've looked at their prices. I've looked at their features. I think I understand some things, but I might not understand everything about servers. I, as a consumer, am going to respect you for telling me you know, something honestly than just, yeah, than just making it up. Yes. But whether you're a highly sophisticated technical person who can describe and write about dedicated servers or whether you're an entry-level person who feels more comfortable talking about domains and basic web hosting or whether you're a designer who just uh, has experience with offline site builder tools and online site builder tools, um, you know, don't just make things up. I mean, be honest with your audience, and your audience will always uh, respect you for doing that. You bet. One of the things I found, too, when you when you do get into some of these areas that you may not be too familiar with, you know, with Elance, just a click away, um, there is people that are available, writers, technical writers that, you know, know all about this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I've, you know, that's what typically what I would do if I'm, once I once I've shared my opinions and uh, you know I've got that part of the site fleshed out. If I really wanted to, you know, expand upon it, just to simply post a project over at Elance, even just mm-hmm. to see what kind of uh, bids would come in. Yep. Like, for, for example, last night I put some. Oh no, it wasn't related to hosting. It was actually related to a couple other things I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Not even knowing if I'm actually going to go through with the project, I decided right. to post a couple of potential projects on Elance just to right. see who was going to be bidding to see if I could find the right person right. to do the task. So same with, same with you know, a topic like hosting. What I would do is come up with a nice little writer spec. What I'm looking for is a technical person who is, understands the hosting industry intimately mm-hmm. and who is, can help me to brainstorm and come up with some really good quality content. Yeah, no, I mean, I would, I would agree that, <clears throat> you know, if you're a good designer, it doesn't mean that you have to be a good content writer. However, even if you outsource the creation of content, you better be comfortable with the content that you're publishing. I mean, you wouldn't publish something that you hadn't read through and understood because, you know, somebody could come to your website and, and write you an email and go, I didn't understand this section of that article. And if you've never read that article or you haven't, um, you know, discussed that content with the with the copywriter or content creator that you choose, it's going to be an awkward moment for you, <laughs> for yeah. sure. So you don't have to be an expert at everything to produce content, but you have to have a basic understanding of what that content is selling, uh, telling, selling, and the value that it brings to the reader. Sure. Well, you know, and another thing that I would do on that is if I didn't have all the answers, which, you know, obviously I don't, uh, a good opportunity for me to pass them from my site to yours, the host. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if they need more information, click here and, you know, head over to one and one who's got a great customer service staff and feel free to give them a phone call and get your Yeah, questions yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, there's, always, there's always a great way to uh, do that. So as far as, you know, advice to a new affiliate, somebody that's just getting started, do you have anything that comes to mind? You, you've talked a little bit about communication and then, you know, calling, you know, picking up the phone. I know if Jesse probably handles a lot of the calls coming in. Jesse was your affiliate manager. Yeah, that's Jesse cool. Bowman is uh, our affiliate manager. He's yeah, a great he, guy. I've met him at a number of conferences. I think he's going to be down at uh, Commission Junction University next week. Yes, week, yes, September. he'll be there. Yep. That'll be great. You'll be there as well? Yeah, uh-huh. So, but if anybody has questions regarding the affiliate program and you know getting up to speed on building a successful presence online in the area of hosting, he could yep. pick up the phone call, pick up the phone, and give you guys a call. Absolutely, absolutely. Same with uh, content creation. I guess you could sit down with somebody like Jesse over the phone and go through different ideas for brainstorming. Yeah, I mean, we could certainly get them, you know, uh, one of the first things we would do is try to find out, well, what level of experience or knowledge do you have with the hosting industry and work from your strength, work from what you know, what you've experienced. This is true of whether you're optimizing a paid search campaign, whether you're managing multiple online marketing strategies, you really always should work from a point of understanding or a point of strength and and then move in you know optimize 
from that standpoint your activities and your campaigns and then move on into the uncharted zones uh, of experience and, and knowledge. Paid search. Let's let's move over to that for a few minutes. Uh huh. It, it's uh, a topic you have a lot of experience with, obviously dealing with affiliates. Yeah. Uh, typically, in the paid search area for hosting, yeah. does one and one supply the keyword list, or do you do you prefer the affiliates actually go and develop that themselves? Um, we do periodically have affiliates who will send us a you know like an idea list or a starter list to to work from uh we'll often we'll guide them towards what we feel are uh the better traffic producers and uh obviously we do some paid search so we're not able to reveal all of our own keyword knowledge that we have however we're not going to steer them in the wrong direction if we see a dog in their in their keyword list we'll say uh this may cost you way too much money compared to the conversions you're going to get and so we're, we're we're honest in that sense. Um, the, we have been we have been known to recommend. Uh, there are various good keyword research uh, softwares and uh, services out there to evaluate before you even begin bidding what words are getting traffic and uh, uh, you've heard the the phrase James uh, the long tail theory. Almost always we will recommend that uh, paid search affiliates, especially the less experienced ones, work from the long tail up into the head. And for those who aren't real familiar with that, these are the low search volume words, which there's not a lot of search queries for, but they're typically highly uh, targeted. They are typically better converters, and there's typically not as many competitors because large-scale competitors focus on the the head of the search volume where all of the extremely high traffic is located. Yes. But for most people, when optimizing on a limited budget, uh, working from the bottom of the search query list, you know, from the low search volume words on up, is the best way to start. Yes. Now, the beautiful thing for uh, affiliates like uh, your students who uh, prefer and are more comfortable with the, the production of natural content is that the experiences that one gains in the field of paid search yes. are the exact strategies for success in content optimization. Yes. Would you, James, rather have a first page natural listing for the word web hosting, or let's say more specifically for the, the word one and one, versus a expensive uh, paid keyword for web hosting or one and one? I'll take I think you would agree, <laughs> natural most content. people would agree, I'll take the natural content position any day. No, no question. And, but the way that you can learn to develop natural content is to take the knowledge that you have about nat about paid search you already know based on testing based on research based on uh, the information that you have you already know what words uh, phrases are driving the sales uh, are driving the the traffic uh, for that topic so the knowledge that you have about traffic uh, based on your paid search is great knowledge to use as you branch out into natural content because perhaps you have a very expensive keyword that you value a lot, but you keep seeing the cost of that keyword rise and rise and rise. Well, if you really like that keyword and you're convinced that that's an important part of your future, augmenting your paid search with the production of natural content around that topic or keyword will eventually help you to uh, slowly lower your uh, your paid search uh, investment and perhaps uh, even replace your paid search investment with an equal or greater amount of sales generated through natural content. Yes. Now, of course, there's more profit in that for the affiliate because they're not having to pay. Exactly. You're not having to put the investment in money, but everything takes an investment, and even content is an investment. At the least, it's an investment in time and thinking. Yes. Now, one, one of the things that uh, in the manual, I have the good fortune of running into a guy named Ed K. Smith from Perth, Australia, mm -hmm. who uh, a student of mine in the natural side, and basically I'm almost a student of his on the paid side. Uh -huh, he, was, uh -huh. he was kind enough to uh, develop a 40-page 
booklet for us because he's a, he's a paid search expert that is mm-hmm. available to readers of the handbook. So for those listeners who may not be to that point yet, yep, there uh, once you get into the back step eight of the manual, you'll find that the, there's that man that uh, that. 40-page manual there for you to, uh, to to dig in and start uh-huh. at the bottom of the list as, as you've uh, so uh, generously shared. That's a, that's a beautiful yep. idea. Well, the uh, you know the, the there's a lot of reasons why people gravitate towards natural search. Uh, excuse me, uh, towards the paid search because you can very quickly say I spent a uh, hundred dollars or a thousand dollars and I received. A uh, hundred dollars or a thousand dollars back. So you know, calculating your return on investment, just from a sheer mathematical standpoint, is 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 a bit easier with uh, with the paid search. Uh, with natural content, you, your investment is one of time, and how you value your time can be different for different individuals. How you analyze the performance metrics, you know, visits to clicks, uh, clicks to sales. Uh, you can put mathematical analysis to it. You can apply, uh, you know, standard return on investment uh, models to natural search, uh, but it's just a little bit different. And um, uh, obviously, if your your main website is about your pet dog, uh, you know, hosting content may or may not be the most valuable for that website. That's right. Um, however, you know, if uh, you find that your your dog website is really hugely popular and people are always asking you, well, how did you pick your domain or how did you pick your how did you build your website? Then in that case, it might make sense to uh, to include uh, ho- uh, a hosting affiliate on that uh, personal you know pet dog site. Yeah. Um, but there are risks uh, associated with uh, with both paid and natural strategy as well. I don't think there's as much financial risk involved with content or, or, or natural organic search strategies, but obviously if you're paying somebody to help you develop this content, you want to make sure that content's unique. You don't want to just be regurgitating or recycling you know, the same article that uh, 600,000 other websites already posted seven <laughs> months ago, Sure, sure. and you had to pay $300 for that. I mean, uh, so, I mean, be care- there's always some risk associated with any marketing oh, uh, campaign or strategy. And with any business that we're getting into, absolutely, yeah. It's just it's just the nature of the beast and life on the net. You know? But with good planning, you can try to minimize uh, uh, some of your risk in in any strategy. Absolutely. Now I can see we, we're down to about sixty seconds here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe you could, if you got anything you know that you'd like to share, anything else come to mind just as we wrap up. Maybe for a new affiliate or somebody that's just getting started. Well, um, <clears throat> reinforce the communication. Uh, when you pick a company to work with, uh, whether it's one-on-one or any other industry, um, absolutely establish communication, establish good communication, frequent communication. And if you're uh, particularly inclined to uh, save money on your hosting and domains and you're wondering, well, wh- why is James talking about uh, this company one-on-one, you know, please do visit jamesmartell.com and uh, and see what uh, what James has to think about us. Uh, you've joined us recently as a, as a partner, and uh, and for that we're hugely grateful. And uh, uh, I think that uh, once your audience uh, hears that uh, you have some confidence and faith in a company like One and One, that should help them to feel better. But certainly, any questions they might have about our company, uh, about our affiliate program, uh, they can email eMarketing at 1and1.com and we'll be happy to get them a reply. That's great. Well, Joshua, you, you've shared with us some, some great information. I want to thank you for that. I know you've provided a lot of great value here. And, uh, well, I hope your listeners will continue to uh, to continue to follow uh, each and every affiliate buzz and uh, apply the, the, the hard-learned and uh, serious lessons of the Affiliate Marketer's Handbook. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. All right, Joshua. We will uh, we'll be in touch, and we'll definitely see you at uh, Commission Junction University next month. I look forward to it. Absolutely. Well, thanks for the opportunity, James. You bet. Thanks, Joshua. Bye-bye. To learn more about James Martell, the School of Internet Marketing, and how you or someone on your staff can quickly and easily learn how to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand, visit theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.